Okay, now we want to look at surface integrals of vector fields. This will lead us into the uh, Stokes and divergence. First off, we have to talk about surfaces and their orientation. A surface S is orientable if there exists a continuous unit normal vector function called N defined at each point on the surface. So here is uh, an, some examples. We have a patch of surface and we have this normal vector N and then the opposite of that is minus N. This is an orientable surface with the N and the minus N. And so we have to talk about then you want the positive orientation or the negative, the upward orientation or the downward orientation. So if you use the N, then you're talking about the upward orientation. If you use the minus N, then you're talking about the downward orientation. Not all services are orientable. The Mobius strip that you see here is not orientable. The, the, uh, the normal vector N as you follow through and go around becomes minus n and so it's it's not a continuous unit normal vector and so um, the Mobius strip is not orientable but um, what we need is to be able to capture the value of this n depending on um, this formula for the surface so in order to find n, what we do is we take the surface, and we um, we set it, uh, we set we solve the equation basically setting it equal to zero, whatever the surface equation is. We set it equal to zero. We call that function g, and then the the normal vector n um, will be found by taking the gradient of g, right? But then we have to make it a unit normal vector, so so we divide by the magnitude of the gradient. And so then um, we have to see, well, where's the vector fields come in? That's all about the surface. That's great. But what, 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 what's going on with the vector fields, and, and what are we actually measuring? So let's take a look at the next slide. So we'll have this vector field F, multivariable functions of X, Y, and Z in each component. And the, the way to think about it is um, we're going to think about it as a velocity field of a fluid. So I have this, uh, this, this velocity field of a fluid, maybe two-dimensional, maybe three-dimensional. And I want to um, calculate the volume of fluid that flows through an element of the surface area, we'll call that delta S, per unit time. And we'll approximate that. Let's take a look at this picture here. So I have this, this element of surface area, delta S. And I have my normal vector, this orientable surface. I have a normal vector, and I have my vector field, F. And I'm going to be able to calculate the volume of fluid flowing through an element of surface area. The way I do that is I figure out then, um, I basically project F onto N, and what I get is this, this component of F onto N. Remember how we found that? This, this by doing a dot product. So we get the component of F onto N as the height of this. And, um, and what we do with that is we multiply it by the area of the base. Area of the base times the height. And so the component of F onto N times uh, the delta S will be an approximation for the volume of fluid flowing through that, that uh, element of surface area. And the way we get the component F onto N, we know, is just by doing the dot product between F and N. And so... This is going to be then uh, what we're going to integrate. We want to calculate the total volume of fluid passing through the surface per unit time. And we had said before that's the flux of the vector field through the surface. And that's calculated with the surface integral. We have the double integral over the surface f dot n ds. Remember the, uh, the surface integral has a multivariable function uh, we had called it uh, we had called it G capital G of X Y Z and and this multivariable function here is then what you integrate this is your integrand and you integrate over over the surface and it can come in many different ways the the parametric the 
the uh, explicit or the implicit, but um, yeah, the flux can be calculated, and it's the measurement of the total volume of fluid passing through the surface. Okay, so here's a visual. I have this surface, S, and I have a, a small piece of surface area here, but then I want to integrate over the whole thing, integrate over the whole surface, and I'll be able to calculate the, the total volume of fluid flowing through this surface. What happens is it's, it's above some shadow region in the, in the XY plane. It doesn't have to be the XY plane, but here it's in the XY plane, and that will then degenerate down into a double integral. So this is where our double integrals now um, intermingle with the vector fields, and the uh, and we calculate the surface integral, and we call it flux, the flux of the vector field through the surface. All right, so here's an example. I have this vector field half x squared in the i component, half y squared in the j component, and z in the k component. I want to calculate the flux of this vector field through the surface, and my surface is going to be this paraboloid, the bowl shape that opens down, reaches the height of 4 on the uh, z-axis, and then opens down in the paraboloid shape, and we will go all the way down to the xy plane, z's between 0 and 4. I'm going to compute the flux of this vector field through the surface. Okay, so what do we do with the surface? We take and solve it um, equal to 0, so we um, either way, um, to orient it the way we need with positive orientation, then what we're going to do is is um, add these guys over to the other side. We'll see why in a second. Um, but um, we're going to add the x squared over, add the y squared over, and subtract the 4 over to get this g. So when we take the gradient of g, we get 2x and 2y and 1. The gradient of G will point upwards. Had we done it the other way, we'd get the uh, gradient of G pointing downwards because this would be a negative one. So what do we do with this gradient of G? We have to find its magnitude because we have to make this a unit vector. The n, the normal vector, has to be unit. And so we, uh, we take the magnitude of it, squaring each component, 4x squared, 4y squared, and 1, and add it up. And so n will be the gradient of G divided by its magnitude, unit vector. That's what n is. We're supposed to take F and dot it with N. Okay, so here's F, and here's, so we just dot here, we get, we get the half to cancel out, and we get X cubed, we get the half to cancel out, and we get Y cubed, and then we just get a Z. And then that's all over this root of, of 4X squared plus 4Y squared plus 1. That's our dot product, and we like to think about this as the, the function G that we're integrating over. Remember how we have uh, in the surface integral there is a there is a function capital G of x, y, z that ends up in the integrand. Okay. And so uh, so so now there's the ds. What what about uh, which which sh um, situation are we in? Z, our surface here, z is an explicit function of x and y, explicit function of x and y. So when we go to do ds, we use this formula here. Had it been an implicit function, we'd have a different formula. Had it been a parametric described, a parametrically described function, we would use a different formula. You have to know the different um, ds formulas. But here we go with this one. We take the partial of z with respect to x, and get minus 2x. Take the partial of z with respect to y, and get minus 2y. Square them, then add 1 and then take a square root. And so, that's going to be exactly the same parts from the uh, from the, uh, the magnitude of G. And the DA just comes in to be the shadow region in the XY plane. See, uh, in the XY plane, Z is equal to zero. So, that's just going to be the shadow region in the XY plane. And we're going to find out that uh, then that's going to be a circle radius two. So, our job is to calculate this flux. F dot N D S. And this is our multivariable function G. And we uh, be replace DS with this uh, root of 1 plus 4x squared plus 4y squared DA. And this conveniently cancels with the magnitude of G. Magnitude of the gradient of G, sorry. 
And so then we're down to this x cubed plus y cubed cube plus z, dA. Now the z can't live as a z. This is a double integral now at this point. So we need to replace the z. What are we replacing by? Replace it by the, you know, this, this surface equation. And so we'll have x cubed plus y cubed plus this z here. And what's our region? It's uh, the footprint in the xy plane where z is equal to 0. So if you set 0 equal to 0, we'll have a, a circle of radius 2. So we definitely want to go polar with this. We'll have r is between 0 and 2 and theta is between 0 and 2 pi. So we'll have uh, x cubed plus y cubed plus 4 minus r squared. But don't forget, now this is a dA now, so we have r d r d theta. Now the, uh, the, uh, the r cubed cosine cubed and the r cubed sine cubed, we can combine these together. And so now we get a great respect to r first. We get r fifth over 5. We get... Uh, this 4 is uh, 2r squared, and this is r fourth over 4. We put a, a 2 in for r, and we get 32 over 5. And then over here, we put a 2 in, we get the 4 times the 2 is an 8. From that 8, we have to subtract the 4, 16 over 4. So 8 minus 4 is a 4. Okay, so now we have to integrate this here, cosine cubed plus sine cubed from 0 to 2 pi. Now, let's think about this. Um, this is uh, cosine cubed. It's going to be, we're going to have a, f basically, uh, this will be a full, it will be like the full period of cosine, except for the cube will just uh, stretch the, uh, just change the, how it bends, but it still will be that whatever area is above the uh, the, the x-axis will cancel with whatever area is below the x-axis. Uh, so um, so this will give us zero, but we can work it out. But this will give us zero, and so will this um, sine cubed on theta. It takes the re regular sine graph. And whatever is above is is a uh, the shape has changed, but it's still above, and what's below is below, and they're symmetric. It's going to cancel out, so both of these guys zero out from zero to two pi. The area there, so this 32 over five basically ends up being times zero, and we just have this integral on four, and that's from zero to two pi. Is that's how we end up with the answer of eight pi? Okay, you can work it out if you want on your own, but it definitely is true that the uh, integral of cosine cubed and and sine cubed from, from 0 to 2 pi, both of those guys will zero out. Okay? Alright, great. So the answer to the question, the flux, the total volume of fluid, the total uh, flux of this vector field through this surface, total volume of fluid through uh, that surface per unit time is 8 pi.